So since the Iowa debacle, there's been a number of politicians and very high profile people, even individuals running for president like Tulsi Gabbard, um, Congresswoman Marcia Fudge, call on DNC Chair Tom Perez to resign. And as calls for him to resign grow louder, well, he's going to have to respond to those calls for his resignation. Now, in an interview with Jake Tapper on CNN, he was asked whether or not he would be willing to resign or was thinking about it, and he was uh, defiant. He said unequivocally, no. So you know this, that some Democrats are calling for your resignation. Former Congressional Black Caucus Chair Congresswoman Marsha Fudge said, quote, we're a party in chaos. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar said Tom Perez should be held accountable for this failure. Have you considered resigning? Absolutely not. Jake, look at the last three years. My job when I came in was to rebuild our infrastructure, to win elections. And when you do that, sometimes you got to make tough decisions. Our superdelegate reform. Uh, I have great respect for Congresswoman Fudge. She doesn't support it. I get that, and I respect that, but I categorically disagree with her on this. We have been winning. This is what it's about. I think it's really important for people to take a, a broader step back right now. Uh, you know, this is the most unsettling phase of the cycle. Mm -hmm. you know, in 1991, George Herbert Walker Bush's approval ratings were, were sky high. Uh, people were saying there's nobody in the Democratic Party field who can win, and there was a lot of understandable angst. We're in a similar position now in the sense that uh, I don't know who the nominee is going to be. We're, right. we're barely out of the starting gate. And the angst is uh, elevated because we have the most dangerous president in American history. But here's the good news. Yeah. We've been winning elections in 2017, 2018, 2019. Right. We are better positioned to hand our nominee an infrastructure for success than ever before. Yeah, so there you have it. Absolutely not. Now, let me remind you that this isn't the first time that there have been calls for Tom Perez to resign. Back in 2018, during the New York gubernatorial primary, when Andrew Cuomo had a primary challenger, Cynthia Nixon, he endorsed Andrew Cuomo which violates the DNC charter. The DNC chair is supposed to remain neutral. That's why Debbie Wasserman Schultz had to resign in 2016. So there were calls for him to resign because going into 2020, we had to make sure that we had a DNC chair that was impartial. He never resigned, and now we have this Iowa debacle, and he still won't resign, even though there are very loud calls for him to do so by someone who's running for president. Now, am I under the delusion that if he were to resign, there'd be someone more competent to replace him? Of course not. But the point is that when things go wrong and there is either incompetence or malfeasance, doesn't matter which, there's accountability. And we haven't had resignations from the Iowa Democratic Party. We haven't had resignations from the DNC. So the question is, when are we going to see some accountability for what happened? Will the DNC be suing the makers of the Shadow app? Will anyone from within the DNC or anyone associated with the Iowa Democratic Caucus debacle be forced out? See, that's the thing. That's why voters don't trust the process, because things like this go wrong and nothing happens. At a minimum, they leave, you know, the Iowa party and probably go on to work for some campaign or be a consultant. Like, it's this revolving door of corruption in DNC, in, in the Democratic Party, in the DNC. And this is why people uh, become blackpilled and stay home, because they don't trust the process. It's thoroughly delegitimized because of the Democratic Party's own actions, and we get no one who wants to, you know, be accountable. Now, Tom Perez, he was trying to uh, legitimize himself by basically saying, well, you know, Marcia Fudge, she's calling on me to resign, but she's also against my superdelegate reform. Now, he's trying to cultivate sympathy with Sanders supporters, so that way he could su suggest, look... I support superdelegate reform, right? And Marcia Fudge doesn't, so are you going to listen to her or me? Well, she can be right and wrong about different things. She's wrong about the superdelegate reform, and that's actually embarrassing of her to be that wrong, but she's right about you needing to resign, because the point is, when things go wrong, again, we need to see some type of accountability. The fact that we've seen zero accountability thus far, the fact that you're not even seemingly trying to put pressure on the IDP uh, chair, Troy price to resign. I mean, when are we going to see any action? Any action whatsoever? We saw zero accountability in 2016 after the DNC rigged the primary against Bernie Sanders. It wasn't until WikiLeaks exposed that Debbie Wasserman Schultz, beyond a shadow of a doubt, even if it was already obvious, was working to sabotage Sanders that she had to resign. But I mean, Tom Perez is someone who was also implicated in those WikiLeaks emails. 
He was talking about shiving Bernie Sanders, creating this narrative that, well, yeah, you know, he has support from young people, but after Nevada, we'll have this narrative that he doesn't have support with uh, black voters and whatnot. So, I mean, this is someone who coordinated with the last group of ghouls that rigged it against Bernie, and he's still here. So, I mean, do you, do you understand why people feel so frustrated with the process? Like, this is why so many people feel demoralized and they don't even want to participate because to participate in and of itself, in their view, is to legitimize the process and they don't want to do that. And like for all the Democrats who are asking Sanders supporters whether or not they're going to vote blue no matter who, that's the least of your concerns right now. Like what the Democratic Party doesn't realize is that they may lose two generations, millennials and Zoomers, because of their behavior in 2016 and now 2020. Like, if Zoomers and Millennials get so demoralized that they stay home, I mean, the Democratic Party will be obliterated. So they should be encouraging them to get out and vote no matter what. doesn't matter who you're voting for if you're young. The Green Party, if you write in your dog, as long as you are participating in this process, we welcome and encourage that. But as Millennials see their candidate get fucked over in real time, all they're concerned with is that they're going to fall in line and vote blue no matter who. Don't be concerned with who they're going to vote for. Be concerned that they're going to vote because you are discouraging them. You are blackpilling not one but two generations. And this is deeply dangerous. Like, this is bad for democracy. The Democratic Party as an institution could collapse because of all of this. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, be chicken little and say that the sky is falling, but you've got to understand voter apathy is already an issue. And if you do this again and there's no accountability... Do you understand what that's going to do to demoralize generations? Like all of my nephews and nieces who are Zoomers, if they're politically engaged at all, they support Bernie Sanders. So I've done everything I possibly can to convince people to participate in this process. And I think a lot of people who are responsible are trying to bring more people into the political process, get them engaged in politics, get them to register to vote and participate. But when things like this happen and when there's no accountability, you just make it so difficult. And the Democratic Party should really be the ones uh, motivating people to participate. But when things like this happen, when the same incompetent people are shuffled from one state party to a candidate's campaign and back and forth, the whole process just becomes delegitimized and young people get discouraged. So I really hope that at the end of the day, we see some better, more competent results. And I'm not saying like specific results for any one candidate. Like I'm just saying win or lose, we need to be able to trust the results and we need to see some fucking accountability, some type of accountability, a resignation, something. But the fact that we can't even get that shows that the Democratic Party is just, they are painfully out of touch, and the only hope that they're going to change directions is if Bernie Sanders actually wins the nominee above all and cleans house, fires everyone, or at least does mass evaluations and sees who should and shouldn't remain. I know there are some people in the DNC currently who are working to make it more transparent and make it better, but overall, the vast majority is just hopelessly incompetent and not trustworthy and let's hope bernie wins they should hope bernie wins otherwise they're gonna lose out and not just one but two generations if they keep this up